What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here bringing you another rad movie review today as we discuss Insidious The Red Door. Yes, we're finally here at the end of the Insidious reviews. On to the last one and controversial opinion, I actually freaking pretty much enjoyed this film. I know a lot of people, it's kind of a hot take because a lot of people I saw either really did dislike this film or they were just kind of mediocre on this film. I had fun with it. So let's discuss the positives, the negatives, the rating, and then I'm going to send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. So Insidious the Red Door is the final film in the Insidious franchise. This is actually Patrick Wilson's directorial debut. So congrats to him. I'm very exciting. That's one major positive I must discuss right away is his direction. I think Patrick Wilson did a fantastic job and we'll discuss more about that when we discuss the positives. But one thing I must say is I was a little worried going into this film because of all the buzz surrounding it was very negative, but also Scott Teams was a writer on this film and I'm not typically into the films that he's written recently in terms of horror stuff. He's been this writer that he's just everybody's going to him and he really didn't have quite a catalog at first and now he's just he's he's in like involved in writing a lot of stuff like i believe he's actually involved in writing exorcist the new one the believer and don't, don't quote me on that but i'm pretty sure scott teams is part of the team that wrote that film so i was a little worried and skeptical but let's get into the positives right away is i think the writing the story it's a fantastic story as it is a direct sequel to insidious chapter two and I love that aspect is that this one actually shows the repercussions of what happened from Insidious Chapter 2, bringing back the original cast from the first two films. All of them are back. And I love, like I said, the fact that it has that connective tissue with the second film, which is like my favorite film in the franchise. And it adds repercussions to the decisions that they decide to make and what it feels like in the future. You can feel that, you know what I mean? You can feel the tussle between Dalton and Josh and how they have such a, you know, distance between them because a whole part of their life, like, you know, a memory is just completely erased. One thing I must say is a positive for me on this film is that I love the slow burn aspect of this movie. I know I'm typically one of those people, if you can build an atmosphere with the film and you can create something that I'm in, to, I will commit all the way through the runtime. You know what I mean? Even if it is a slow burn, because this film has atmosphere, it's creepy, and I feel like this film is actually a little bit scarier than some of the other films in the franchise because of, you know, we know still as an audience member what Dalton and Josh are missing from their memory. We know that, but to see them kind of get tortured again with their whole, like the relationship is so distant, but then how Josh is trying to discover things and he's alone because he's divorced now. Dalton is off to college and he's doing his own thing, trying to assimilate into a college atmosphere and environment. But like I said, being tortured with memories of things and a teacher that he goes to for an art teaching that he has an art class unlocks a certain door in his brain and the memories start flooding in. So I just, I like this film. I really think that it's very well crafted. Patrick Wilson with the direction, I think he did a fantastic job and he lets you know right away, almost from the beginning, when you see a certain scene when Patrick Wilson is texting with Dalton and you see the texting scene and it's a very still shot, doesn't move. There's something in the background behind his car, but you don't, the camera doesn't move. There's no crazy music. It's a very subdued type horror. And I know some people might not be into that because it's not all the way in your face, jump scares, nothing like that. This film is, like I said, much more about the atmosphere and I greatly appreciate that. So as you can tell, Insidious the Red Door, I had a fantastic time with this one. Like I really did. I even like some of the side characters, like the, the girl that Dalton meets uh, and during college and then she just starts helping him just starts getting like invested and like I know it's kind of like a weak point it was like why is she so invested in this kid and like you know cares about him having a good time and learning about his past but it's it's just really cool I thought it was handled really well and their chemistry was great I think the acting is really fantastic too and for me like I said this film greatly surprised me because I went in sometimes expectations having lowered expectations can really help you because when you go into a film you're like oh this is just going to be you know I've I watched that or this is going to be a bland piece of crap but when I was watching it I was just like wow I'm sucked into it I was invested and I cared about it and when we got to the third act and everything that went down I was like yeah like I'm here for it.
Now let's get into the mixed and negatives because this wasn't a perfect film. I'm definitely in the positive camp on this film, but I don't think it was like a perfect film. It does falter a little bit from the fact that we don't get any, um, you know, flashbacks or too much stuff about anything about Elise, but we did focus two movies on her completely. So I understand that, that this one was going all the way back to the second and first film and focusing clearly just on Josh and Dalton because they even take the wives out of it. A lot of the other characters are just sidelined, even Dalton's brother. He's only in a few scenes, and but he has monumental scenes that push the, the story forward. But I think not having the uh, Lisa's character in it and the wife's character in it, not as much, I think... It kind of hurt the film a little bit. I'm not saying Patrick Wilson and his um, the other character that plays Dalton, I forgot his actor's name, I'm sorry, that they didn't carry the film sub and a good substantial amount, but I think having Elise in there for just a little bit cameo, and then I think Rose Byrne should have been in it a little more, little more as the wife character. I would have appreciated that, and it would have felt more like a good, nice, you know, completion to the film. To the franchise. One other thing I must say is that what the, we'll talk about the writing right now is what I was a little skeptical about is I do enjoy the story. I like what they decided to do with the story and what the journey they took us on, but the writing is kind of subpar. I think some of the writing in some parts of the film are actually kind of cheesy and subpar and I was like, ah, eh, like it seemed like kind of something you would just get out of like an AI writing system. Like you would just plug into a computer and this is like a script they would print out for you. So a little parts of it did feel like that in terms of the writing. And I do love the slow pace and the nature of this film and I was down for it, but I can see where they could have shaved off probably like five or 10 minutes. 10 minutes might've been too much, probably like five or seven minutes. You probably could have shaved that off of the film and I think it still would have had the impact, the punch that it had with that third act. So for me, Insidious the Red Door, I had a lot of positives to say. Not too many mixed and negatives. I was quite high on this film. And in terms of a rating for me, Insidious the Red Door is gonna get a 7.5 out of 10. It's really right, it's like right there with the last key. Like I had a lot of fun with these two films. Compared to Insidious chapter three, that just had me kind of down in the dumps, like, ah. Oh, why did we continue this? Or do we have to go on with more? That's kind of how I felt after that film. And then the last key was a nice pick me up. And then the red door was a nice send off. And I think for real, like I think it was a good final film for this franchise. And now that we're done with the reviews and everything, and we got all the ranking or the, all the reviews and the ratings out, now be sure, you know, the ranking video is gonna be coming too. And be sure also to let me know down in the comments what are your thoughts on this film because these are just my opinions and my thoughts on what I thought on Insidious the Red Door. So I would love to discuss with you down below, but be sure to also like, subscribe, have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I post videos because we got some other stuff coming. We got some Scooby-Doo videos coming, but then also we're going to be starting The Exorcist. Now that we're done with Insidious and we completed this and we're going to rank the franchise now, I'll give you my ranking pretty soon. We're going to move on to The Exorcist franchise because we have the other one coming out in October. So it's a very, very exciting time. The fall season is almost upon us. I'm so excited. But you know what's most important? Y'all have a safe and happy day. Peace out.